Great. So now that we've learned a little bit about how to tie an interface in and increment that simple counter. So, you know, this was, I think, a good example for someone who's maybe still a beginner, uh, but is ambitious and wants to learn quickly how to build their own tycoon game. You, you already know how to increment a counter, uh, a real simple response to an event when a button's click. So we've kept it kind of simple. But one of the things that you'll notice here, if we look at our script, so let's look at our script real quick is that while we're keeping track of the number of stores we have, we're not really keeping track of how much money we have. We just have a text representation of our money on the screen. And, it, and here inside of our store, we don't have any, any way to keep track of how much money we have. Now, admittedly, if you're um, not a novice and, and, and been programming a while, one of the things that is going to be obvious is that we probably are not going to keep our total money inside of our store object um, at least not for very long but for this example we are going to keep it here you know for beginners um, so later we will worry about moving our our total balance and our and the money into more of a game manager but for right now this this is going to serve as both our game manager and our store manager because we're going to keep it simple so we're going to create a float here and this float's going to keep track of how much money, because money is, you know, got decimal places. So integers, um, as, as I'm assuming you know, are single digits, one, two, three, four, five. Floats can have decimal places. So for money, uh, we're going to keep floats. And also because uh, floats can hold much larger numbers. Um, when I did an, an earlier uh, test version of this, I used integers. And one of the things about integers is they, 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 they can't be really, really, really large inside of C-sharp. But floats can be much, much larger. I think uh, to the 38th power, in fact, is how large floats can be. So we're going to say float. We're going to say uh, use the same syntax that we used up here. So we had current balance text. Let's go ahead and call this our current balance. And just like we in our start, we initialized with a store count of 1. Let's go ahead and initialize current balance with a balance that we want. So we can say current balance equals, say, $2, for example. Now, one of the things that becomes obvious is that we're going to need to have a little bit more information about our store. For example, we don't know how much our store should cost or the base value of our store should cost. So let's go ahead and add that in as well. We need to have a store cost. So we're going to say here and say float store cost. And I'm actually going to go ahead and call this base store cost. And why am I calling it base store cost? Well, because I know by our game design that each, each store we buy, eventually we're going to make it so that it costs more. So the first store might cost a dollar, and the second store might cost three dollars, and the next one five dollars and so on we're gonna have a little formula that we'll introduce later that will will calculate what our, our our future store costs will be but we're gonna just for now keep it simple and have a base store cost and let's assume our base store cost for now equal is uh, one dollar and actually let's make it a dollar fifty so we'll, we'll have a dollar fifty now notice how this turns uh, squiggly red. Why is it turned squiggly? Because in C sharp, and this is just something you have to know, is you need to add an F here. And it, it's telling us down here at the bottom, notice how it says literal of type double cannot be implicitly converted to type float. Use an F suffix to create a literal of this type. So we need to come in here and put that F in there to say that this we want to specifically tell Unity or C sharp for that matter that this is going to be a float. And it knows it has to be a float because up here. So notice how it didn't make us do it for this when our current balance is 2. But if I do 2.0, then it's going to throw a fit and need that. So it can convert a whole number into a float, but it can't convert as soon as you put that decimal place in there like that to a float. Just something to keep in mind. And so now we ha we're only going to be able to afford to buy one of these and then... We wouldn't have enough anymore. So how do we check? How do we see if we have enough money? And that's what we're going to do right here. So when we buy our store, we're going to learn our first if statement here. We're going to say if, 
and I, I use an open parenthesis, if the base store cost is greater than our current balance, and I'm just going to do a return. And what that return means is just jump out of this. In other words, don't let us buy another one. It just keeps us from doing it. Now, we could obviously, um, we're going to, and we are obviously going to want to give better indications as to when you can buy a store and when you can't and tell people you can or you can't. But this is for a simple example to, to, to make the game playable so you can't purchase a store when you don't have enough money. Now, the other piece of that is right now, there's nothing that is making the store cost anything. In other words, we're not taking anything off of our current balance. So how do we change that? We're going to come to right down here and say current balance equals current balance minus our base store cost, like that. So this will now take away from the money that we have, that we start with, and because this is a $1.50, it's going to come away. And then the next time through, we're not going to have enough, so it's not going to be able to keep incrementing. So let's test this out. And now one of the things we can do is I'll copy and paste this debug, and we can show our current balance, just so we... We can see how things are working underneath the hood. So let's run this. And um, I'll click on console so we can see what's happening. I'm going to click buy store. Notice that we went to 2, but now we printed out a 0.5 here because now that's our current balance. And when I click buy store, nothing's happening because we don't have enough money to buy, buy any more stores. We've, we've cut it off. So the, the remaining piece now is how can we show this current balance? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop this um, current lecture, and we're going to configure the next lecture as an exercise so that you can try and do that yourself.